Place the body harness around the chest and under the armpits. Fasten the Velcro straps together, making sure the snaps are in front and centered on the chest. Okay, what we want is the strap to be snug, but we don't want it to be uncomfortable for you. Is it too tight right now? No, it feels fine. Okay, that's great. You can put your arms down and just lean back in the chair. The circumference of the head is measured with a special color-coded measuring tape or an ordinary metric tape measure. The tape measure is wrapped around the patient's head approximately one inch above the nasion and one inch above the inion, the prominent bump on the back of the skull. The color-coded tape will indicate the color of the proper cap size. When using a metric tape, the size range is printed on the label of each cap. The ear electrode is clipped onto the earlobe, similar to a clip-on earring. For the patient's and technologist's safety, rubber gloves should be worn during the rest of the procedure. Using the syringe plunger, inject a small amount of electrogel into the disc cavity. Holding the syringe with the dominant index finger and opposite forefingers to hold the electrode down, rock the syringe back and forth. Using moderate pressure, this will abrade the skin and reduce the resistance of the electrode. Follow the same procedure with the opposite ear. Next step we're going to do is take a me special measurement from the front part of your head to the back. To assure proper placement of the frontal electrodes, measure for the FP line. Measure the distance from the nasion to the inion. This metric measurement is then noted by the technologist and the decimal point is moved one place to the left. For example, 36 centimeters would result in a measurement of 3.6 centimeters. We would then measure up from the nasion 3.6 centimeters and mark the FP line. A similar procedure is used in finding the placements for the FP1 and FP2 electrodes. The noted head circumference of 59 centimeters would result in a measurement of 5.9 centimeters. Calipers are expanded to this resulting measurement and placed evenly between the middle marker. Lines are drawn vertically and horizontally on the extended FP line. Place the sponge discs over the FP1 and FP2 marks. These will absorb perspiration and reduce movement of the electrodes. We are now ready to place the electro cap on the patient's head. Set the FP1 and FP2 electrodes into the sponge discs on the forehead. Continue to work the cap on from front to back until it is tight on the head. Secure the cap straps to the body harness by crisscrossing straps and snapping them into place. Double check that the straps have been pulled tightly and secured. This will reduce movement artifacts during the EEG exam. Work each electrode onto the scalp to move excess hair from beneath the electrode mount. Make sure that the cap is centered on the head and fits properly. Attach the blue connector end of the cap to the blue electrode board connector. At this time, connect the A1 and A2 ear electrodes into the appropriate position on the electrode board. Next, we will prepare the electrode sites. The syringe plunger should be filled with 3 to 5 cc's of electrogel. This is the normal amount needed to fill the electrodes in the cap. To fill, press the white mount against the scalp with the first and middle finger. Insert the blunt needle into the hole. Lifting the needle slightly off the scalp, inject the electrogel into the mount until a small amount of gel comes out of the hole. While holding down the electrode, place the opposite index finger on top of the syringe. Using moderate downward pressure, rock the syringe back and forth. The excess gel is then wiped off and the process is continued until all the electrode sites are filled and scalp is abraded. Remember that light fingertip pressure is all that is needed to abrade the skin and obtain proper electrode resistance. Too much pressure may cause the scalp to bleed 
which can result in persistent artifacts throughout the test.